Yes, hi Paul, looking sharp in front of you there. Um, can I ask just about your um, reason and decision to get involved and how it became, how it all came about, you and the apparel chats and all of a sudden here you are at Signet of Championship Club? Yeah, well, look, I, I'd be in contact with Andy. I, I was in the camp last year. Uh, I'd be in contact with Simon and a few of the other coaches as well. Um, so Andy asked me after the Autumn Nations would I be interested in getting involved. Um, I took a few weeks to think about it and and decided it, it was the right thing for me to do. You know, I, I feel I can offer value. I, I have an awful lot to learn, certainly as a coach, but I felt... I, you know, I could immediately offer value to the coaching staff and to the players, um, and it's a great opportunity. I think international coaching is it's very different. You know, you get that development opportunity, you get a chance to reflect, you get a chance to improve uh, during the times where you're not coaching and you're not stuck in a tournament. But when you're in the middle of a tournament, it's full on. Um, so yeah. I, I suppose the big reason is, uh, you know, I felt I could offer value. My, I suppose my recent connection to playing is, is, you know, you could say it's a weakness, but it's I think it's a bit of a strength as well. You're you're, you're still clued into what a player feels and how a player learns and how hard it can be to learn at times and to change a habit. So, um, so that was it. I mean, I, I was excited the minute he rang me, um, and I think he's got a really good environment here. The players enjoy it incredibly they're very um, I suppose a very collaborative approach which I would have seen when I was in with them last year and whenever I speak to the players whenever I've met them so it was a great environment to enjoy, to, to join and and it ex the, the opportunity excited me I would imagine from your point of view it's a very much a hands-on role I mean I saw some of the footage of the game that they had against Ulster um, you know you had a whistle with one hand having your head to stay warm yeah, I mean, look, it, it's very collaborative. The, it's amazing how much coaching the players actually do themselves, um, how, how educated they are on what's happening, uh, you know, on opposition, on what's happening in the world of rugby, what what we need to do and how we have to deliver it. Um, so that's very enjoyable for me, but it's also a challenge for me. You know, you want to be in there running the whole show, but... Um, you know, Andy has us questioning the players, checking for understanding all the time. And, you know, when players understand something, they have a better chance of delivering it physically. And uh, and that's something he's big into. But, yeah, I suppose, look, forwards coaching and, and the way Andy does things, everyone is hands-on. Um, so you have to be in, in the middle of it. Um, I, I certainly, you know, I, I certainly hope I'll have an impact in the lineout. But a big part of lineout is 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 experience. You know, to be able to see pictures and and have the feel of what's going to happen before it happens. You need to be there a lot. You need to see it. Um, you probably need to have a bad few days and learn from them. And uh, you know, I think the Ireland lineout has been pretty good. There's been a few high profile losses right on right on the opposition line, and they're you know, they're, I suppose they're very expensive, you know, you can lose the line out on the halfway, you may not have scored from it anyway, you, you know, you, you have an amazing chance of scoring for it, but if you have a line out five metres out, it's an important line out, so they, they've been high profile losses for the line out, and it's been a big learning curve for the players, I mean, I would have went through that as a player as well, um, and you can do all the analysis and try and put all the systems in place, there is a feel um, to it, and there is a bit of experience allows you to see the pictures quickly so um, so that's important for the players uh, it's an area I've an interest in uh, you know I'm familiar with the system that we would use it's evolved from when I played um, but I suppose that there's a little bits and pieces in in all the provinces that we we steal and poach off each other so I have a familiarity with the system um, so yeah, it's 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 you know I like to think I can offer value there. Uh, it takes a bit of pressure off Simon, obviously as well. That was a big part for me to be able to come in and know there'd be a, a really good handover because he was moving to defence, um, and you have that, 
you know, anything you do or you see that we've done in the past, you're able to find out the real reason it was done because Simon is beside you. So, um, so that makes the transition easier as well. I don't know how long they'll be out for. Um, uh, Caelan's obviously flagged co concussion symptoms, so he's gone back to Leinster. He'll go through the procedures and po protocols there and get checked. And, um, uh, you know, Quinn has a neck injury, so he'll have to go back and get checked. You know, there are two injuries you don't ever want to be messing around with. You have to be careful. So um, I'm not sure we've no length of time on either of them. And it's, it's, it's frustrating for them and, and uh, frustrating for us. Caelan's obviously... A uh, fantastic player. I would have worked with him in the under twenties. He was he was incredible, and uh, he has that X factor. And, and you need those players in world rugby now. Um, Quinn, I played against Quinn towards the end of my time, um, uh, and he was excellent. Uh, we had a big we had a laugh about my last game. I think against Connacht, I lost to him in the sports ground, and he was brilliant that day. And he's a big man. Um, great ideas in the line out. You know, so well coached by Jimmy Duffy up in Connacht. So. It's been disappointing not to have him in, um, or not to have him in now going forward, but we have no time frame on when they'll be back. Hi, Paul, it's Ruth Gorman here from UTV. Great to see you Hi. back. Thank you. Um, I just wondered about Ian Henderson, what your plan is um, with working with Ian. You know, we know how good he can be, but I suppose consistency has been a big issue there. Just what can you do to, to help Ian with that? Well, I think a big part of consistency is being injury free. Um, you know, he's in a work rate position where the fitter you are, the more you can deliver. Um, and he's been unlucky with injuries. Um, he's obviously a big man. We don't breed them all as big as him. Um, so he's really valuable for us. He's been really impressive since I've come in in terms of his, uh, you know, his work rate in terms of training, but he's, his work rate off the field in terms of uh, the analysis he does and the opinions he have, he has. You have to be very sharp with him. So, um, you know, the best thing for for Ian would be for him to stay injury free and allow him to to build some form. Um, and that's a challenge for all players now nowadays. But when, when I look back, you know, some of the guys over the last few years, the guys that have been injury free and have been able to accumulate the sharpness and the fitness required to be able to play relentlessly for 80 minutes, they're the consistent players. Hi, Paul. Uh, Danny Early here from RTE. How are you? Um, just one of the questions, Paul, that I would have had is, obviously, you've been in there before, um, you know, but obviously coming back in a former role, how different is it, and are there difficulties in coaching lads who you would have played? Because, obviously, there's still plenty of them around. I, I would hope not. I'm sure there will be challenges down the line when you have to have difficult conversations with people. But, you know, Andy has said over and over again, players just want you to be honest with them. Um, and, and if you're wrong, hold your hand up. And uh, that's what I intend to do. I don't ten, intend to, to take a, a, you know, a big coach-player relationship with them. You know, I intend to deliver them as much honest feedback as I can. I intend to try and improve them as players as much as I can. Um, and I had to be myself in delivering that, um, you know, and not try to be something else to them. You know, some of these guys I've known for a long time. Some of these guys are, go are good friends of mine. Um, but I just have to be honest with them, straight up with them, positively constructive with them. Um, and, and that should maintain the relationship. Well, I suppose we're in the HPC now, and that has actually made a, a big change to it because, you know, you've pitch side televisions uh, in the indoor, uh, in the indoor pitch here. You've 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 TVs in the gym, um, so you're able to have these mini meetings, these uh, short meetings where you go from a meeting to a little bit of technical work, back to a meeting to a little bit of technical work. So, it was there was going to be a natural change anyway from when Joe finished. Um, to 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 when Andy took over. Um, I suppose you know when, when we had meetings with Joe, he was he, he loved the meeting. You know he was he was box office when he delivered, 
and he was always trying to keep everything under 30 minutes so there wasn't a lot of questions but I always enjoyed then debating things after the meeting with him um, um, and I never felt like I couldn't question him or argue with him um, and I loved his environment and it's, it's probably just similar here, it's probably shorter meetings because there's more time for questioning and in fairness the question that Tom O'Toole asks in a meeting today and the answer he gets is probably a question that seven or eight people should be asking as well so it's probably good that we have those discussions and debates and that's the way players learn now you know they, they, they it isn't about long meetings you know it's short sharp meetings they watch things on their phone um, you know you can send them things on their phone that wasn't there towards the end of my time when I retired it was you know, we were into a meeting, we were into the group, we had a meeting, it was generally a half an hour long, um, and then the questioning would happen afterwards over dinner, over lunch, or whatever that was. So it's different here, and it's more, it, look, I think the Crusaders have been very good at it from when you chat to Rod. It's collaborative, trying to get players to coach, trying to get them to own what they're doing. You know, if someone can coach something, explain it really well to someone else, they know what they're doing. Uh, and it's a great way to, to check for their learning and their understanding. Okay, guys, we'll just take the last one this section from Neil Tracy has his hand up there. Hi, Paul. Just to go back to when you were saying to Michael about how when Andy Farrell offered you the job and you took a few weeks, did the offer itself come as a surprise to you? Uh, it probably did, yeah. It probably did. Um, yeah, I would speak to him a lot, and I'd speak to other coaches a lot. Uh, I'm always, you know, I, I I just find watching the game interesting and finding out, you know, even the the rugby matches that people find boring these days, where there's a lot of kicking. I I always found find it interesting trying to figure out why teams are doing what they're doing. There's generally a a logical reason behind it. So I'd always be picking up the phone to coaches. So, um, but we hadn't ever discussed that. Um, so it was a surprise.